Over the past few years, I've had the chance to work with dozens of gamers. And the more I work with gamers, the more I started to wonder, like, what's actually going on in these people's brains? In my day job, I'm an addiction psychiatrist. So I tend to work with people who have problems with alcohol or opiates or marijuana. And one of the things that I have always found really helpful is to understand how do these substances actually affect the chemistry in someone's brain? And so the more I work with gamers, the more I realize that gaming certainly has effects in people's brains, but those effects tend to be a little bit more subtle than what happens with biological addictions like alcohol. Alcohol, for example, directly stimulates certain receptors in your brain that give you feelings of euphoria and disinhibition and kind of slow you down a little bit. Whereas gaming affects your brain in, in slower ways. It's not like we're, it's not an actual chemical or physical substance that's entering your bloodstream and directly activating parts of your brain. The way that games affect your brain tend to be in smaller ways and they tend to affect different parts of your brain at the same time. So the first kind of circuitry that I wanted to talk about today is your reward circuitry or your dopamine circuitry. And dopamine is the primary neurotransmitter that regulates pleasure in the brain. So in, there's this part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. And when dopamine activity happens there, it's one of the ways in which we feel pleasure. It's like the pleasure center of our brain. If we look at a lot of drugs of abuse like cocaine and amphetamines and things like that, those stimulant, medication, uh, those stimulant drugs tend to directly increase dopamine in our brain, which makes us feel good and euphoric. Video games usually start out that way. So if you stop and think about why is a video game fun? Like what makes it fun? It's because there's something going on with, your, with the way that you're interacting with the game and there's some degree of engagement that causes this dopamine release to happen in your brain. And so that's what makes a game fun. The interesting thing is the more I work with gamers, and, and you guys may feel like this, is, this happened to you too, there are three discrete phases that a gamer goes through when they play a game. The first phase tends to be when the game is actively fun. Like the more you play, you're actually enjoying yourself. It's a lot of fun. You want to keep playing it. And then over time, we're talking more like months or years, not days, is you continue to game regularly your brain starts to adapt to that steady degree of dopamine release. And our brain has a very normal mechanism called um, homeostasis, where it tries to maintain kind of a balanced state. So one of the ways that homeostasis manifests is a biological principle we call tolerance. So if you think about someone who drinks for the first time, the alcohol really like, they can get drunk really quick. But if you start to drink on a regular basis, your body develops tolerance to the alcohol. It takes more and more alcohol to make you feel like you're drunk because what's happening is your body is starting to make itself less sensitive to the effects of alcohol. And gaming is actually no different. So in the first phase of gaming, our body really hasn't acclimatized to that dopamine release. So it starts to feel really, really fun. In the second phase, we start to develop tolerance to that constant stream of dopamine and so what happens is the game starts to be less fun. When you're playing the game, you're not having as much fun as when you used to. In the second phase, it doesn't really give us a high, but it can still remove a low. So some people, when they game, when they, start to first, when they first start gaming, they feel like they're having fun. They feel like it's kind of like a high. And then in the second phase, even though you don't feel the high, if you're feeling bad and you start to game, you can make those negative feelings go away. So if you're feeling stressed out, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling pissed off, then there's a chance that when you play the game, those feelings will kind of go into the background. And we'll talk a little bit more about emotions. Um, so in the first phase, it's kind of giving you a positive emotion. In the second phase, it's getting rid of a negative emotion. If people continue to game, what actually happens is they enter this third phase, which is, which is also true of biological addictions, where it doesn't even take away the negative emotions. And some of you guys feel like you're kind of trapped in your gaming. It's not even fun for you anymore, but you somehow don't know how to stop doing it. You don't even have fun with it, but it's like you, can't, you just can't do anything else. And it's not like you actually enjoy your gaming. It's just you can't stop. 
And if you've reached that point where the game doesn't even, if you play a game for 12 hours a day and you actually stop and think, you're not even having fun during those 12 hours, that's really when you've started to develop a biological addiction. And so what does that actually mean? What's going on in your brain? So it starts off with when you're playing a game, it releases dopamine in this area called the nucleus accumbens. And as the, the brain gets used to that dopamine release, it actually starts to decrease its sensitivity to receive that dopamine signal. So it's kind of like turning the volume down on you know, a, like a, a radio, where the strength of the signal of the radio is the same, no matter whether the volume is up or the volume is down. But you can change the way that that signal is manifested by adjusting the volume. So it's like your brain is actually turning down the volume on your dopamine circuitry because it's getting so much dopamine all the time. Over time, this leads to this state called dopamine exhaustion, where your body is so chronically used to having that high level of dopamine from the game that the volume is turned way down. And that causes huge problems for gamers because other things that you would normally find fun start to become less fun because your dopamine uh, tolerance is so high and you've hit this point of dopamine exhaustion. When I work with gamers, and you guys let me know if you feel the same way, a lot of what they tell me is that the game actually isn't as fun as it used to be. But if they try to do other things, they don't find those other things as fun as well. It's like things that, like going out to fr uh, with friends for dinner is like kind of fun, or they used to do other things, like they used to maybe play like pick up football, or they used to um, watch more movies, or something like that, but that even other activities outside of gaming become less fun. And that's really, really dangerous. Because when gamers, when you try to stop gaming, what you have to do is you have to do something else instead. So you're getting out of the house more. But the problem is that when you get out of the house and you try to do something that other people consider fun, you may find that you actually don't feel like that activity is fun. And at that point, the gamer concludes, oh, I don't like X, Y, or Z. I don't like going to an art museum because it isn't as fun as the game. I don't like going for a hike, or I don't like hanging out with these other people because it's just not as fun. What you need to realize as a gamer is that when you feel like it's not as fun, there's actually a change in your neurochemistry that's going to make it so that any activity that you do that you would normally find enjoyable is going to be dulled because of the way that games have exhausted your dopamine circuitry. And so what you really have to do, and this is why it's so hard to quit gaming, is give yourself time away from the game, and then your body will reset its homeostas homeostasis to have kind of a normal dopamine level. And once that reset happens, and that can take somewhere between probably three weeks and two months, to be completely honest, um, you should start to get some change within one week. But like by three weeks, you should have a decent change. And by two months, you should have it kind of be completely back to normal. During that period of time, you just have to recognize that anything else that you do may be less fun because of the way that your dopamine neurocircuitry has been changed. And so when you're thinking about gaming, first ask yourself, did you go through these phases? Did I first find that games were a lot of fun? Did I then find that games weren't as fun, but if I was having a bad day, they still kind of made me feel better? And then the third phase is, if you've hit the point where you're playing games and you don't even know why you're playing them anymore, you don't even find them fun, but you can't stop, then chances are you've got this dopamine circuitry exhaustion problem. And then understand that when you try to go out into the real world and find alternatives to gaming, because of the way that your dopamine circuits have been exhausted, you're not going to find that stuff as fun. And if you actually give yourself a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you'll start to enjoy activities in a different way that has nothing to do with your preferences or your likes or your dislikes. It all has, it has everything to do with what your brain is actually capable of in terms of feeling enjoyment.